and I'm Diana Garza, and I'm going to be demonstrating tracheostomy care in a patient. Now, each facility has their own uh, policies regarding trach care, so I will refer you to the facility, facility's handbook on policy and procedures to, so that you follow the, their rules correctly. Um, here in the lab, we will be uh, using the following equipment. We're going to need a biohazard disposal. We're going to use a tracheostomy uh, care kit. These come commercially prepared. Please make sure you look at the contents to make sure that everything is in there that we need. In the case of this, this has trach ties, pipe cleaners, it has gauze, it has sterile gloves, and uh, two uh, basins for use for soaking purposes. We have some sterile saline and some hydrogen peroxide. Again, please refer to your policies procedure manual and also the physician's orders for the tracheostomy care. Some cannulas um, do not uh, do well with peroxide. They do degrade, so you need to double check and make sure that that is within their policy. Um, we also need extra gauze, just in case. Trach ties, these are commercially prepared. You'll see some places where they just have the cotton twill tape where you tie them off. These ones have Velcro on the back. I like them because they're a lot easier to reposition. And uh, scissors if necessary. So we're going to get started with the uh, tracheostomy care. On a patient w with uh, tracheostomy care, you want to make sure to do the trach care after they've been suctioned and that their oxygen levels are okay. Sometimes in some patients you may want to just give them some extra oxygen with an ambu bag or some increased flow of oxygen prior to the, to the tracheostomy care. So when you go in to do the procedure with your patient, make sure you introduce yourself to the patient, discuss with the patient what we're going to be doing. Um, if in this case with this patient you want to give them some supplemental oxygen beforehand, make sure you put your gloves on. And using your bag valve mask, you can attach this to the tracheostomy and give some supplemental oxygen. A lot of these patients already have a trach mist collar on in place that you can use during the treatment to make sure they have plenty of humidified oxygen during the, during the change out of the cannulas. A lot of these patients you want to protect yourselves, not only with gloves, but also with a face shield or eyeglasses. And uh, here's an example of it. Uh, because of the fact with the tracheostomy where it bypasses your normal humidification center of the mouth, nose, larynx. Uh, the sputum gets very thick, gets very tenacious, and in the case of a patient when you're doing tracheostomy care, you don't want to be leaning over here in the line of fire, so to speak, because the sputum can hit anywhere from 6 to 10 feet away from the patient. That's something you want to look forward to. But anyway, so we're going to get ready to do the tracheostomy care. We're going to be changing out the inner cannula. Now, you will see some uh, nurses will do this with uh, the table up over the bed. I don't particularly like that because if you have a patient who's confused, has issues with staying still, you can, they can accidentally bump the table and then everything can fall off onto the bed. It also makes the patient feel a little claustrophobic when you do that. So I like to put mine to the side. Raise the table to a level that is comfortable for you and then we're going to open up the trays. When you go to open up your sterile tray, make sure you loosen all your other bottles, containers, anything that you might need. Now I bring extra Q-tips for cleansing. Sometimes with uh, tracheostomies you can have some wounds underneath where you may have to, to put antibiotic ointment or to clean around the trachea the stoma. So I like to have some extra with me just in case we need it. So I'm going to open up the tray, and if you can see in here, I'll show you. There is two basins in here. One's built into the tray. The other one is removable. We have a sterile drape. We have a pair of uh, sterile gloves, and uh, uh, we're going to start using those. So first thing I'm going to do, take my tops off, and I'm going to put my sterile glove on. Make sure you touch the inside of the cuff and then you put it on your dominant hand. Okay. 
So this is your sterile hand, and this is your clean hand. So we're going to take out my drape. Now when you look at the drape, one side is dull and the other side is shiny. The shiny side goes down. This is your water permeable side. So you would spread it and lay it on your table. Now you have a sterile field to put your supplies. I'm going to put my glove here. I'm going to take out all my stuff. Then inside here we have a little bottle brush. We have a couple Q-tips. As I said, I like having a couple extra because you never know. Some uh, pipe cleaners. We have trach sponges. Now if you look at your trach sponge, it has a already prepared slit on it. Some places will actually cut the 4x4s to fit around there. I don't like to do that because there's a risk of causing little uh, fuzzies or little uh, ends of the cotton getting stuck into the stoma itself or a patient actually inhaling them. So use the commercially prepared ones if you can. Then I have some extra 4x4 gauze. And then here's the uh, trach ties. We kind of like shoelace, don't they? Then I'm going to lift up my basin. And then using my clean hand, I'm going to pour some of the solution. I've got peroxide here. Usually, if you're going to use a peroxide solution, it's half and half. So half peroxide, half saline. The other one is going to be sa uh, just plain saline for soaking purposes. And then I'm going to uh, take out my extra Q-tips. And then I'll lift up my gloves inside the cuff like that, put your hand in there. Please do not be alarmed if your fingers don't go into the exactly the right hole. <laughs> this takes practice and I really recommend that y'all practice putting your sterile gloves on. The only way you're going to get comfortable with doing this is by repetition. So we're going to get ready and we're going to take off the uh, inner cannula and soak. Remember this is your clean hand and this is your sterile hand. Okay, when you look at the uh, tracheostomy, you're going to see that there's a little blue dot that lets you know that it's locked. You're going to turn the uh, lock counterclockwise, one quarter turn. You're going to lift out the cannula, taking it and dropping it into your peroxide and saline solution. You're going to let that soak for a minute or two. Then what I like to do is I like to inspect the site. Um, I'm going to uh, remove the under trach sponge and dispose of it. You want to make sure you look all around the stoma, make sure there's any redness, drainage, secretions, anything like that that could be going on. Using my sterile hand with some peroxide and water, you can clean any exudate from around the neck. I like to use a dry one to dry. Make sure that the skin is clean and dry under the face plate because otherwise moist, dark, damp areas tend to grow bacteria. So you want to make sure that area stays nice and clean. Our cannula has been soaking for a little while using our bottle brush, we're going to pick up the cannula and scrub it out. You can use the brush on the outside as well. When you take the cannula out, note the amount of secretions, the color, consistency. Some facilities will actually have a sterile uh, cannula ready to go back in when you do your trach care. So that when you take it out, you drop the, uh, the dirty one in to clean. You have a fresh one to put a new one back in. Um, again, refer to your policy and procedures manual. Right. Still have some drainage. You can use the extra gauze to clean around to make sure that face plate stays dry. Okay. So our cannula has been soaking in the saline. You want to make sure that that cannula soaks all the way through with the saline. You don't want to be inhaling peroxide. I'm going to lift it out. 
I'm going to dry it off with sterile gauze. Using your sterile hand, you insert it. Now, some patients will cough when you do this. So we have our cannula replaced. Okay, so we're going to replace the tracheostomy sponge. There's a difference in how you put it. Some people will put it overhand and under. I put it under and over because it's easier for me where I'm left-handed. So when you go to insert it, I like to push up one side at a time. Make sure your balloon valve is not tucked into your trach sponge. I've seen it where they'll have some places where they'll actually have two sponges, one up and one down. Try to make sure there are no wrinkles, creases underneath the face plate, because that will cause skin breakdown. Now, when you're replacing the tie, I personally advocate having somebody else in the room while you're doing the tape tie, especially if this is somebody who's confused, this is a new tracheostomy, because of the risk of something happening when you change out that tie. The other thing I'm an advocate for is putting one tie on before you remove the other one. The only time that I wouldn't recommend that with is if you have a lot of secretions, drainage, blood on the ties. You don't want to contaminate this one. So if I was to have somebody to help me to put this on, I would, excuse me, I'm going to lift your head up and we'll pass the tie around so that both sides are even. Make sure your tie is straight and flat against the neck. The good thing with these uh, Velcro ties you don't have to worry about tying knots. If you could zoom in here and see, this one here has an old-fashioned knot tied on here, and they can be very difficult to undo. Especially wearing gloves. You can see where having an extra hand could be of help here. Again, check in your policy and procedures manual. A lot of facilities will not allow you to change out the trait tie without a second personnel being present. So we got our new tie on, and I'm going to remove the old tie. There we have the tracheostomy care done for a patient. When you're done with the care, remember to remove all the, line, all the supplies that you've had. Go back to the desk and I want you to document date, time, care that was done, the amount of secretions, and how the patient tolerated it. I appreciate you viewing this video and you have a good day.